No, the guy is a DJ, he's a style influencer, he's a tech investor, he's a music curator, he's a brand consultant. The man is cool. Ah oui, il a travaillé avec des brands comme sur des événements privés, private stuff, avec des brands comme Adidas, Entertainment Weekly, HBO, Instagram, Jay-Z, Michelle Obama, Twitter, Vanity Fair, GQ. Est-ce que vous en voulez un dernier? Vous en voulez un dernier? Prince. Say what? Give a big crazy noise for DJ Mick Batiske! Oh, nice echo. I like that. I like that echo. You knew I was a DJ, right? You had that echo ready to go? How's everybody doing? We're good? Make some noise, please. I'm really glad I'm last because this is going to be a lot more chill, a lot more informal. The people who are on before me, amazing, fantastic. I don't have any of that. <laughs> so I want you to not think of this as like this amazing TED kind of situation. I want you to think of it like you're listening to your favorite podcast. We're doing an interview. You're just like trying to learn some stuff. You're maybe doing your dishes. You're taking your dog for a walk. And we're just like, we're having a conversation, okay? So what I want to talk to you guys about today is reinventing your personal brand and how to connect your personal brand to your passion. Now, how many of you guys would you say by a show of hands are entrepreneurial? Cool. How many of you guys think you're creative? A lot. That's fantastic. How many of you guys have your own passion that you're working on right now as a career? You are in the right place. This is exactly what I want to talk about today. I always like to start off with a picture of my kid because he's way cooler than me. He's way cuter than me. And uh, it kind of just makes me really happy to see him on the, on the big stage. So, you know. All right. Here's what I want to talk to you about today. A great brand is a story that's never completely told. Now, I'm 40 years old. My career has evolved so many times throughout the course of my life in ways I never possibly thought it would happen, from being a DJ in a dorm room to standing on stage with you here today in Montreal. But the crazy thing is, I never thought any of this was going to happen as it was happening. If you would have told me I would be doing this while I was trying to just collect records and play a bunch of music when I was in college so I could meet girls, I would have never thought this could possibly happen. But there has been a series of amazing steps, some really small, some really big, that when I look back in hindsight, all these amazing things happen. Now, just to give you, most of you have probably zero idea who I am, which is completely fine. Nobody ever knows who I am. I've done parties for a couple cool people that you may know, like they just said during their initial announcement. I got to do a party for Prince. It involved mashed potatoes and him sitting on a couch. It's a very fantastic story. If you catch me later, I'll tell you. I got to do a party for this woman. Now, you guys should be very glad you're not American. <laughs> America right now, we, that could be a whole other 10 minute talk, but we had an amazing first lady two years ago and it was a privilege to do an event for her. I got to do a party for this guy. I'm sure he's the hero to many of you guys in this room. Actually, I think he was on this very stage last year. And now you're like, what does all that have to do with anything? Why are you really standing up here? Well, here's the thing. No matter what you do in life, whether you're doing your own passion stuff, whether you're an entrepreneur, or whether you're working for a brand or a big corporate company, you have to realize your personal brand is what's going to get you through that entire process. The average person is going to change jobs four times even before they're 32. How many people in here are younger than 32? Okay, yeah, so exactly. How many people have changed jobs more than twice? Okay, so get ready. It's coming. When our parents worked, they worked for one company. They might have worked for like 20, 30, 40 years, they got retirement, they got pension, they got this gold watch, they got this whole amazing thing. They, their personal brand, they didn't even have personal brands. Their personal brands identified with their company. Like, oh, like, I don't know what it is in, in Canada, but like in America, people are like, my mom worked for General Motors for 50 years, or my dad worked for uh, J JP Morgan for 30 years. That was their brand. Us, we don't do that. Our personal brand is, is ourselves. So it's important to put a lot of thought and a lot of just like, well-intended meaning into what your personal brand represents. My personal brand kind of ended up being, uh, I, I spoke at MIT a couple months ago, and but they just, they, I mean, they're way smarter than I am. They distilled my personal brand as being a cool Brooklyn dad. 
I thought that was kind of interesting. And I'm going to basically break down to you five principles of how I think you can also create your personal brand, not as a cool Brooklyn dad, but as the best entrepreneurs here in Montreal. Lesson one, you control the narrative of your personal brand. No one else does. I learned this when I was 18 years old. That's not me. That kid is way sexier than I ever was when I was in high school, all right? I was also, I was, I, I don't, we can't say fat, because that's rude, right? So I, I, was, I was double his size. I had worse hair. I played drums, but not the cool drums. I played cymbals and triangles and all this bullshit. I was probably the least cool kid in my high school. And it wasn't like, I wasn't in a band like Kurt Cobain. Like, it wasn't Nirvana. We're talking like jazz band, marching band, symphonic band. Actually, when I was in fifth grade, I had to carry a fucking xylophone to school on a bus. Could you imagine that? So that's a lot, that's a lot harder than showing up on stage in Montreal with a microphone and a clicker, let me tell you. So anyways, I was such a loser in high school. I'm not kidding, and I, I, I can't wait to tell my kid this story. Like, you're never, you're never playing cymbals, dude. I was such a loser in high school that on our last day of school, we had a marching band trip. Uh, we went to an amusement park and did this whole thing, and nobody really would even want to sit next to me on the bus, and nobody would want to, like, room with me for, like, the overnight trip, so I actually had my mom drive me three hours to do my final marching band performance and drive home. I was like, this is crazy. I don't want to live the rest of my life like this, so... Two months later, this picture, actually, this picture is actually from two weeks ago. I actually went back and spoke at my alma mater. Two months later, I'm the exact same kid, the same weight, the same clothes, the same everything that made me not good. But instead of showing up to my dorm room with uh, cymbals and drums, I showed up with two turntables and two crates of records. I was instantly the coolest person in the dorm. I was like, this is amazing. This is what I've been missing out on for 18 years. All be, and I I didn't, that was my first ever experience at changing the narrative and changing the perspective of how people view me. And I was able to take that kind of mind state and apply it to everything throughout the course of my life. Because truthfully, I didn't change. I was the exact same person. But how people perceive me because of how I put it out there is something that changed. Now, lesson two, it's very important to find an intersection of what you're deeply passionate about and where that intersects with where you have an aptitude. Now, you guys remember Michael Jordan, right? You're not that young, right? You know who Michael Jordan is? Do you know the famous Michael Jordan story about when he was in high school? Anybody? No. I am the only 40-year-old here? So when Michael Jordan was in high school, you know who he is, right? He played basketball. He's a billionaire. He's rich as fuck. You're wearing his shoes. OK, cool, cool, cool. He got cut from his high school basketball team, right? And he walked out of that gym that day, and he was like, this is fucked up. Like, I'm never going to, like, let this define my life. I'm going to go out and be the best I can be. The whole, the whole fairy tale thing. And it ended up happening, and it worked out for him. He became the best basketball player of all time. So I was in college. I was in grad school at the time, actually. I was DJing to pay my way through grad school. I didn't think it was going to become my career. And I was standing in front of a class just like this, giving some sort of finance, uh, you know, presentation. And my teacher said to me in front of the whole class, there's no way you're going to take your creativity, meaning my DJing, and this whole business stuff, meaning this degree I was paying for with my DJing, combine it and make a career. You're just not going to be able to do that. Now, granted, this was 15 years ago, but still, his mind state was completely wrong. And he's like, he said this in front of the whole class. He's like, you need to just choose. Are you going to just do this DJ shit and fuck your life off, or are you going to go like, use your degree and become like a, a real businessman, whatever that really meant? And I walked out of that classroom, and I was pissed, right? I was irate. And I, got, I can remember the whole night walking out of the thing, walking to my car, and I was like, no, no, no. This is the night I'm going to, he doesn't realize how hard I'm working as a DJ just to pay to go to his stupid class. This is the night where I decided, well, I'm not going to be just a DJ. I'm going to use my, all my business stuff and all my entrepreneurial skills and all of that and put that all in the same basket, combine my passion and combine my knowledge and kind of create a whole career off of it. He has no idea. He set the whole tone for my entire life by dissing me in front of the whole class. The third lesson I want to tell you your brand is a living culture that should credibly evolve throughout time. What does that mean? I was on a panel about five years ago, maybe six or seven years ago, and my DJ name used to be, so I, I, I came out of the 90s hip hop scene, right? So like, that's why I played the Biggie before I came on. I love, I love all of that stuff. My DJ name when I started, this was a great name in like 1997. It was DJ Mick Boogie, right? Credible as fuck, right? That's why I'm on this stage. Now. It got me a great DJ career. I got to do all sorts of cool stuff, travel the world, do a bunch of video game soundtracks. It was a great hip-hop DJ career, AKA a finite DJ career. 
And what happened was I started doing a lot more stuff like this because people, for some reason, want to hear me tell these stories. So I was on a panel. This is not my panel that I was on, but this is a panel I found in the, on Google today on the way here in the Uber. <laughs> uh, anyways, we could, we, could, we could go into that later. I'm on this panel, right? DJ Mick Boogie, right? So like they have they introduce all these people on the panel. It's like John Smith and like, you know, whatever, Jack Johnson and all these like really fancy, like real people names. And then they get to me last and they said, DJ Mick Boogie. And everybody laughed. And they didn't laugh like how like the polite laugh you guys just did. They laughed. Like they laughed to the point that I had to like be seven times more intelligent than those guys just for people to take my answers serious. So I kind of went home, and I was like, okay, we need to do something about this. This is not the name I want to have for the rest of my life, especially as I continue to evolve outside of DJing, which we're going to get to in a second. So I was able to rebrand well at the top of my game, and thankfully, I was able to consolidate everything under the name Mick, one word, all caps. I kind of treat it like a company. But you see a lot of companies rebranding, right? Like Dunkin' Donuts just dropped donuts. Their coffee still sucks, but they're just going to be Dunkin' now. And you see, you see these things all the time. Uh, and, and for me, I was really lucky because I was able to have like a name, Mick, where there's not, if my name was John, it probably wouldn't have worked. But you don't see a lot of examples of people, specifically in entertainment, who make the attempt to rebrand well at the quote unquote top of their game. And a lot of my peers and a lot of the brands that I work with were really confused, like, oh my God, we really can't even understand why you would do that. And for me, it was more like, why would I not do that? I see the longevity. I see the potential. I see where the world is going. And truthfully, I wanted people to take me serious. So I had to kind of be ahead of the curve and stay in the game before the game kicked me out. And that's something as an entrepreneur, as somebody following your passion, you should be very, very mindful of. The fourth lesson I wanted to tell you is create a brand that's the epicenter of your passions. So shortly after I did the name change, okay, I was reading this article online. It said five DJs you need to know right now. I was so excited. I was sitting at my kitchen table. I remember I was sitting. I was eating some Chipotle. Do you guys have Chipotle in Montreal? I love Chipotle. I need, I need a Chipotle deal. If there's anybody here that has Chipotle hookups, but you don't because it's Montreal. Anyways, I'm sitting there. I'm reading this article. And I first, my first thought was, my career is pretty good. I wonder if I'm on this article. So in, in this article, I clicked through. Wasn't in the article. Not only was I not in the article, I didn't know who anybody was in that article at all, except for Questlove, and he was number five. And I was mind blown by this because I had created a whole life, a whole career, support my whole family with DJing, and I didn't know who any of these people were. But here's the thing that caught my eye. At first, it was really confusing to me. It ended up being a really great example of like turning a no or turning a negative into a positive. Everybody who was a DJ wasn't listed as a DJ. They were all listed as a something slash something slash something. So like philosopher slash socialite slash philanthropist slash DJ or fashion model slash designer slash paleontologist slash DJ or whatever they were. And then here I am sitting at my kitchen table and I'm just a DJ eating Chipotle. And I was like, this is not going to work. Now, couple this story with the thing I just told you about changing my name, and the whole kind of universe opened up to me right in front of that exact moment. So I said, what is it that I do? I thought back to grad school. I said, okay, I'm an entrepreneur. I thought back to being on that panel. I said, okay, I'm a speaker. People are always asking me for my insight for brands and stuff. Okay, cool. I'm a consultant. People are always saying, hey, can you help me in other sort of ways? Cool. And I, I'm an investor. So I said, cool, that's fantastic. I'm going to change the whole narrative of how I present myself as all these things slash DJ. The minute I did that, a zillion other things opened up, and my life kind of became the epicenter of where I'm at right now, which is if you could take the, like a brand like Complex and a brand like Fast Company, and you basically take the smart, nerdy businessman, and you put him in the coolest sneakers, you kind of get me. And the last lesson I wanted to tell you today is tell the world who and what you are and why you should care. When you're doing your social media stuff, you have to really think about what you're putting out there, and not just think about what you're putting out there now. You want to put out there what you want to be. So what, when I put my stuff out there as a DJ, it wasn't just about records and nightclub flyers and stuff. I was like, I want to I do more talking. I'm going to make sure my personal brand, especially from a social perspective, reflects that. I want to do more tech investing. I'm going to start making sure I'm sharing that sort of stuff. I want people to look at my son and give him opportunities. I started making sure he had the best sort of social content as well. And I as the more effort and the more time and the more just like overall like gusto I put into that, these opportunities started happening because I was putting them out there into the world. And it just literally manifested itself in front of my eyes. I couldn't be more grateful for it. And I sit here today as a man who didn't even think I'd be doing this when I was 18 years old. And now just to have the opportunity to share that story with you 
is mind-blowing to me. I thank you for having me. I'm honored to be here. I would love to do Q&A with you. If you guys see me afterwards, ask me any questions. My Instagram's at Mick. Feel free to send me questions. I'm here to help you. I'm grateful to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mick. I'm from the 90s, too. I like this <laughs> period. Oh, just one fast question for me. I want to know about Prince and Potatoes. The, the what? <laughs> Prince and Potatoes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Prince okay. and Potatoes. <laughs> I'll tell you, um, I, I'll tell you two, two things real quick about that in like 30 seconds or less. He was sitting there. Nobody danced at his party until he kind of like created some sort of like signal and then all his people got up and danced. And he was sitting on, like, you know, like if you go to a club or you, you could sit like on top of the booth, like you're not supposed to, like people always stand like in a booth in a club. He was sitting there on top of the booth eating mashed potatoes. And I was like, what? I wonder what he would play. And this is actually, I, I'll, I'll end with this. This is like a, the first time I really had to make a, an unethical decision in the name of business. I'm Googling while I'm DJing for him, who are Prince's favorite artists? And it was like Michael Jackson and James Brown. And I'm like, all right, that's easy. I love Michael Jackson. I love James Brown. Let me play a song. So I'm looking through my computer. Any DJ who DJs, and this guy over here could tell you for sure, when you look through your computer, you always find some songs you don't know how the fuck they got in your computer. You're like, I don't know where this came from. So I found this mashup of, of Michael, Michael Jackson singing over a James Brown drum beat. I didn't make it. I have no idea where I downloaded it. But I listened to it. It sounded good. I was like, there's no way he's not going to like this. These are his favorite two artists. So I play it. Right? He's really excited. He's sitting over on the couch eating his mashed potatoes, like in purple, and a robe, whatever he's wearing, loving every second of it. And he's looking at me and he thinks I'm doing it like live. And I had to really question myself do I go up and tell him I just found this shit online? <laughs> Fuck no. So I start, I did the, I did the acting thing that, that all the Vegas guys do when they DJ, all the EDM guys. I start acting and pressing all the buttons and turning the thing. <laughs> and he's looking at me, and the more acting I'm doing, He's getting more excited, eating more mashed potatoes and shit. It's crazy. <laughs> and I just stood there and just acted my ass off for three minutes and 24 seconds. So the song ran out. And then afterwards, he came up to me and shook my hand and said, that was great. And he, wow. walk, and he walked out, and I closed my eyes, and everybody disappeared out of the room, and literally it was empty. It was like a Chappelle skit. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mick. <laughs>